I'm Ellie. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my creative process. I found it quite a challenge because I don't normally start with a concept, a concept when I do a painting. I often start from life or from a photograph. So I produced this piece here and this piece is mixed media um, and it's mainly acrylic paint but I have used tissue paper in it to create texture. Um, I have also used gold acrylic ink. So I wanted to create a sense of form for the earth and create a transition between dark and light. Initially the painting I made was very, very flat. I'd done quite a bit of research into uh, photographs of wasteland and destruction and it just didn't work. So I remade it, I rebuilt it with more tissue paper, more layers of paint. I also did some research sketches of plant life when I went on my lockdown walk, so I did little flowers which I used here. Um, and in the end I was really pleased with my, my final piece um, and I really hope that you like it too. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jenny Birch and I'm a mixed media artist. My response to the brief of Eden was a picture that I've called God Spoke and because for me, the Garden of Eden and the creation of the world are closely linked. I used um, acrylic paints, oil pastels, collage, stitch, beads and hand dyed silk to create this mixed media abstract. The colours and the textures and the shapes emerging from the nothingness which is de depicted by white to form the Garden of Eden and then the rest of the world. Hi, uh, my name's Debs Harrison and this is my entry into the Christian Arts Festival and the piece is called The Devil's Gateway. It's made of Portland stone, double mounted on slate with 23 karat gold gilding. The inspiration for this piece came when I was holding a stress ball um, that was shaped and patterned like the continents of the earth. And I, it, the, the parallels struck me that Eve inviting the apple is like us and the beginning of consumerism because Eve believed a lie. She believed that God was withholding something from her and the desire of humanity was for more. And we still have that. We still believe that lie. We still believe that we are actualised by the possessions that we have. We still believe that it is in taking what we desire that we are made happy, unfulfilled. But the reality is, the more we take, more others suffer. So, for example, the mobile phone. The, when we upgrade our phone, there are people in other countries who are being exploited to mine the minerals that go inside it. And when we upgrade with fashion, there are sweatshops in other countries that are labouring to supply us with those fashions. So it struck me that whenever there's gains on, on, uh, for one person, there's losses for another. Now, the one reason why I did this piece is because Jesus, when he comes to earth, he rejects the lie that he... Um, can be self-actualised by the things he has or by the power or the status he has. He knows who he is and we can have that same spirit of God living in us to reject the temptation, to reject the lie that there is more if we have possessions and if we consume. Thank you. This picture, Creation Cartwheeler, is an original detail from a larger design about the Holy Trinity. The background shows rolling hills dotted with trees, and the foreground a tumbling, spinning sea. Central to the whole is a patterned blue cartwheeling figure. The open plain shows a mixed group of animals, an elephant, a monkey, a goat and a kangaroo. 
Above them, two-toned birds flutter and float across the interlocking blue and white of the sky. The cartwheeler moves in and through and across the space, enlivening all the shapes around him. The world is at peace. Creation is in celebration here. The loose abstract style of imagery lets the viewer open up their imagination as their eyes move around the image. Is this the vibrant first creation or the restored renewed one? Does this figure symbolise revived humanity, playfully delighting in the world that God has restored? Or is this the resurrected Christ, come again to walk the earth with us in triumphant joy? Hello, I'm Carol Burry. I work with drawings and paper textiles and the work I'm exhibiting with the Edom Christian Arts Festival reflects the research and time that I've spent sketching, walking and talking to the Lord. Finding creation in the smallest objects as well as the expansive landscapes. Experiencing the wonder of this world in the newest small spring leaf or the heady scent of blossoms, finding a sense of hope in this very different world we're finding ourselves in was particularly helpful. Discovering that a regular walk was not made alone and that the tree of life in that first garden of Eden is as present today with Christ keeping me safe. I love this verse of scripture from Deuteronomy 8, 7-9. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. This this lockdown has been difficult for everybody, and uh, but you know, you, even when you're feeling down, you, you just have to sort of find a way of um, appreciating uh, what you do have. And I, I know making a cup of coffee in the morning and watching the birds uh, has helped my mental health. And uh, painting this uh, piece for the Christian Arts Festival has helped my mental health too. And here we see the serpent, uh, the devil, moving away from the Lion of Judah. Uh, you've got destruction and the fall. And we have, uh, you know, the beauty and uh, birds of paradise and the light radiating from the tree of life. Man inventing, as you see the astronaut here, a timeline of uh, humanity on Earth and, you know, technological advances. And then we've got... Um, God's creatures and um, restoring paradise and a view to his paradise on the horizon. I've often asked myself when I stand back from this painting what uh, I like about it the most. Um, but I think I like uh, the lion um, because it's the centre point of the painting and it's uh, Jesus, you know, the line of Judah, and I've often wondered what it's like to look into um, Jesus' amazing eyes.
My name is Mike Tucker. Beside me is my painting entitled How Dare We. I've used the story in Genesis 2 as the basis of the painting regarding the Garden of Eden to represent unspoiled creation. God created it to be used, placing Adam there to till and to keep it and to feed from it. I interpret the eating of the forbidden apple to represent humanity assuming to be godlike but overstepping God's intention and spoiling his creation. In the centre of the painting is a teenage activist Greta Thunberg, whom I see as a latter-day prophet. I've depicted her sailing across the Atlantic in 2019 to attend the UN summit on climate action. There, in a remarkable speech, she accused us older generations with the ringing words, how dare you? Standing on the prow of the yacht, I've shown her facing the spoiled world, bravely travelling towards it. Behind her she carries the image of the unspoiled world, a world without cleared rainforests, without parched fields, without flooded homes, without melting sea ice and without dying coral. This unspoiled world is to me the Eden which continues to be subjected to the climate change that we cause. God is calling this tiny girl Greta to use what she calls her superpower derived from her Asperger's syndrome to challenge us to ask ourselves, how dare we? Hello, my name is John Barrett. Here's my response to the competition. It's called working to restore Eden and it's a series of images I created in southern Spain. Um, this is on unstretched canvas using acrylic. Um, they're all based on observations of being in that area. Hello, my name is Karen Bourne, one of the artists exhibiting at the festival this year. I've been asked to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the pieces I've submitted. My art practice revolves around working with words and trying to capture a moment or thought in time. I write haiku poetry and use the discipline of its structure to create poems that have a brevity and simplicity. Haikus have been described as one breath poetry and in a world obsessed with speed it can be easy to rush over them. They require a slowing down to really listen and see to stop and dwell in the space they occupy. Lost in a moment, shattering separation, the serpent slithers. I was thinking about the choice that was made by Adam and Eve in the garden. The consequences of their action were immediate, affecting all involved. There was a severing of connection they did not foresee. The words and colours of the painting try to convey this loss. Eden was spoilt, its perfection marred. Darkness and sin had entered, leading to a physical separation, hence the tear from top to bottom. The painting is not particularly attractive, but neither was the outcome of that moment. Blinding orange light, glass caught sunrise reflection, hopeful wings take flight. The sun was rising and reflected in a window opposite our house. The effect was intense and vivid. As I thought about it, I realised it reminded me of the light and power of Jesus' resurrection, the day that brought life. Wings that had once been held were now set free to fly in the restoration of relationship and forgiveness. I have tried to capture that brilliance of light and the promise of hope.